Hello there, and welcome to the Fire That Burns YouTube channel. I have a new talk ready for you guys, a talk with the always lovely Clementine of Vision of Atlantis. And so the symphonic metal band Vision of Atlantis released their latest live album, uh, A Symphonic Journey to Remember, back in 2020. And I had a talk with Clementine about the whole experience. How is it for a symphonic metal band to actually play with a symphony orchestra live on stage? It's a bit technical, but uh, I hope you will enjoy. Please check out the interview right now. The only reason why we managed to make, a DVD, to make a DVD with an orchestra was because we discovered this specific orchestra, mm -hmm. this Bohemian Symphony Orchestra of Prague. They, actually, we, we stumbled upon their name because I think Thomas Kaza from Napalm, he saw that name play with another metal band. Mm -hmm. And since you know we're a symphonic metal band, it's our it's a dream come true to play with orchestra. Yeah. It's, it's it's like the final purpose because that's our our music is re written that way. <laughs> so yeah. it's meant to be played with an orchestra. So we always had this as the back of our mind. We just knew it's extremely expensive to do this. So we always thought this would not be possible before. We can't afford it. And the thing is, this the, this orchestra is a game changer because. Mm -hmm. It's not like all of these super national, well-established orchestras that charge a lot for doing anything. This orchestra has a different approach and makes things possible. So we, we got in touch with them out of the blue, like, hey, uh, we just discovered you and we saw that you like to perform with metal bands. Hey, we're a symphonic metal band. <laughs> this is our music. <laughs> yeah. Would you ever like to, would you ever consider to, to do something with, uh, with us? And... Uh, luckily enough, we were very happy that they actually said, yes, uh, we really like your sound and it would be amazing to do something together. And then we started to open our imagination. Like, oh, my God, uh, yeah. it seems like it's possible. You know, it seems like it's a f like we can reach it and it's affordable for our band that, that we can do something like that. Mm -hmm. And then we said, OK, let's 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 start with a concert. How about we play a special concert with orchestra? And um, um, we just needed to find the right place to do that. And then we. We checked that all the festivals were booked for that specific summer, 2019. We contacted them. We said, hey, we're Visions of Atlantis, but we could come over with an orchestra. That this would be how much it would cost. Uh, would you help us do that? And then your head was over Germany. was very interested and very enthusiastic yeah. of, of having us with an orchestra for the very first time. So they also made it possible. It was like a, it's a team, teamwork, you know? <laughs> it's like yeah. the orchestra... Has an, has a way of working with metal bands that makes it affordable even before you're as big as with Temptation, and the festival was also interested in pulling out something different for its lineup on that year. Mm. So that's that's how it started. That it got concrete that we were going to perform with an orchestra, and then when we realized, okay, wow, we're going to play Bang Your Head Festival with a full orchestra. Wow, <laughs> um, shall we just? just play it and that's it we said no way we have to take the best out of this let's record it let's find a way we can finance how to record it and then if the videos are good if, if we're happy with the entire product maybe why not just making a dvd out of that this mm. is really how the process was it was never from the start we make a dvd at that place with an orchestra it was we found the orchestra it was possible to work with them we found the festival it was possible to play with them and then we decided to make a DVD, we shot it, and we liked the result, so we released it. That's how Perfect. So, so, so how was it to, to work with a symphony orchestra on a project like this? Was it a, what you call it, a demanding job, or did you have to rearrange songs specific for the orchestra? Um, actually, no. They were pretty, like we sent them the set list, they were, we were thinking for that specific show, and they didn't say, like they didn't reject any song. They said everything's possible. And I think to be very honest, I mean, we're, we're a metal band before being a symphonic mm. project. So anything a symphonic metal would, band would write is way easier to play for uh, an orchestra compared to all the magnificent symphonies of the classic world, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, it could be that it's badly written, that, that some people arranging orchestras don't know that this melody can't be played at this height by a violin and that you need a viola instead or things like that. But this is up to the orchestra to sort of rearrange. They did a little bit of rearrangements. They printed their own, they, they wrote all the arrangements. They print, printed their own, their own scores. 
um, they really did everything on their on their own to respect the arrangements the way we meant it. But we were not those control freaks who need to make sure every detail matched the original version because right. that's not how we picture live music. You know, we play with an orchestra, it's live music, it's going to be recorded. Yes. Yeah. It's going to be different versions than what's on the record on purpose because yeah. it's live. So we're, we were not those people who need to check what every instrument is going to play to make sure it exactly fits what, what we gave them. Absolutely not. So it all was from this, from our side, very far more, we made things easier for the orchestra. Mm. And we, we had to rehearse with them. We rehearsed twice with them. Then we rehearsed on the whole, entire afternoon b- before the show. Because of course, the main issue with when you're a metal band that, that plays with the following a click, the orchestra doesn't follow a click really. Oh, right. You know, it's, yeah. it's an organic piece. It's mm-hmm. 20 people who follow one man, <laughs> mm, yeah, 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 and 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 in the classic world, you know, there is there is this, still this the structure of the music, you know, but there is not so much the structure of the tempo. It varies. It flows with the intensity of the piece. I mean, it should not flow too much, of course. Otherwise, otherwise, uh, but but there are moments where it slows down. There are moments where it sort of accelerates a little bit and when you play with a click you can't afford to do that you have to stick to the click otherwise the people in front they hear two different things yeah 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 Makes and sense. yeah and on the dvd there were some parts like that where the orchestra was a little bit floating uh around the the, the tempo and we had to fix this a little bit but um but overall, they made an, an amazing job and we're very, mm. very happy with the results. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it sounds fantastic. Uh, it really does. <laughs> um, so for, for you as a singer, is it in any way different to play a concert with an orchestra like this? It, 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 uh, it had two different kind of effects on, on me. The first one is when it comes to the sound, um, we perform with in-ears, you know. So those in-ears, they, they are meant for us to be singers to be comfortable so that we can hear the harmony correctly and we can sing on 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 in sync with mm. with the with the band to be on tune to be comfortable to hear ourselves not to damage our voice so this is i don't have in my ear a perfect mix at all i have the basic elements that i need to find my marks and and be with the music so i didn't have them too much in my ears I didn't hear the orchestra so much on stage, mm. but I heard it during the rehearsals where way more. And um, when it came to some of the songs, especially the last home, which is to me the most emotional song we have, I have to admit that it was so emotional to hear an orchestra playing that track. That I, I, the first time we rehearsed it, I was completely overwhelmed by by the emotion that I couldn't sing. <laughs> I was like, yeah. oh my God, this is beautiful. Okay, I'm crying now. Great. So uh, we had to play it again and I had to pay attention during the show to try to stick to my marks, my emotional marks I had when we played without orchestra. Mm. So that was the, the first thing, like on the emotional level, uh, it's very powerful. So, and at some point, I was like, I don't know if I want them too loud in my ears because I, I can't be distracted. You know, I have to stay focused, and I'm not. I'm I'm performing the show. I'm not the one who watches and listens. So, I have to keep doing my job, even though I would have loved to just listen to the orchestra the whole time because I I love it. <laughs> <laughs> well, luckily, we have the DVD now. <laughs> also for you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's, it's different. I still watch, then I watch myself too and this is different. <laughs> <laughs> but on the other hand, the other aspect is that um, when you're on stage and you're 25 people, it's a totally different feeling than when you're just five, like mm. we were in general. In general. So we had the feeling now we could compete with the crowd. Not that, not that there were only 25 people in front of us, but that suddenly we're a fleet, you know? Mm. Suddenly it's 25 people playing the same music. It's it's a real show. I yeah. I, I used to take part in, in, part in, in bigger productions when I was younger. I, I sang with big choirs and and so many people, so many energy in the same direction. It's it's powerful. And when you're on stage and you know you have a full orchestra behind you, you're like you feel you feel stronger. <laughs> and also because sometimes your own songs have those epic moments and uh, a little bit of drama. And when it's only the band on a small stage, you're like, yeah, can you feel the drama now? <laughs> well, it's kind of small, but it's still there, you know. But <laughs> but when you're on a big stage with fire and an orchestra behind, it's like, can you? 
feel the drama now. And, yeah. <laughs> you, you can actually uh, fly <laughs> all of a sudden. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's like we, the entire dimension of what symphonic metal is, that's that's it, you know? So mm. that, felt, that felt really good. It was just one moment on stage, I remember that, I was like walk, watching the audience and I was slowly walking backwards and then softly my back touched the back of the conductor. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I was like, oh, oops. And in that moment, I remembered, I totally forgot. There was an orchestra behind it. It was very intense for us to perform the new songs mm. uh, because Wanderers was not out yet. You know, it was yeah. going to be released a couple of weeks afterwards. So we had our 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 hardcore fans in the front rows and we know we're going to play songs they had never listened to so mm. this was very exciting mm. and we had amazing feedbacks already and even after the show they were like oh my god I really can't wait to listen to the new tracks again they sounded so yeah. amazing but you know it's hard to get to catch a glimpse of a song when it's played live and you're in the crowd and, and you watch things going on and it's so much information so, so that was one thing and then having the power techniques with us mm. for the Second time, but this time was like a real big time, was also like transcends your show. Suddenly it's like it's, there are some primitive instincts going on. You know, fire is so it's so symbolic. It's so powerful itself. It's like we we feel energized as soon as the flames pop up on a very a massive moment of the songs. So even though I felt I was burning alive all the time, it was... Uh, <laughs> It was, uh, yeah, I even missed the beginning of the song New Dawn, like the first two lines I skipped because I was completely blown away by the fire. I was like, oh, my God, what's going on? <laughs> and I, I had, you know, with Meek, it was, we, we, no, none of us have experience of working with pyros. And even though we rehearsed with orchestra, we didn't rehearse with the pyros. Yeah. We had pyros on another small uh, Polish Polish festival, but it was not of this range. Like this, this pyros there were, were way bigger and way closer to us, and and way more often during the show. So, so yeah, I was I was feeling like I was totally not used to that, and I I I lost focus for 20 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's the magic of such, such moments, you know, and. Mm. Uh, um, I did. I did. I, I know. I did my best on that night, and we were all very stressed out because the more people on stage, the more reasons things could could have a problem. You know. So. Um, so yeah, it was very, very, very intense overall, but very satisfying too that that we managed to do that. That we pulled it out. That people were happy, and then we made a DVD out of it. That people are buying. That it charted. You know, we were very happy. <laughs> Why do you think that orchestral music and metal in general have found each other and fit so well together? I mean, we have of course bands like you and 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 and, and, and Nightwish and all that, but also the more extreme bands like Flesh God Apocalypse and Dimo Borgia. Mm -hmm. um, what is it that orchestral music and metal has in common? As you I see? think I think both music explore a super wide range of emotions. When you take classical orchestral music, you have the lightest thing to the darkest, heaviest cataclysm, uh, cataclysmic. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. you take the flight of the, the the ride of the Valkyries. You take all of this, all of this. You take all the Wagner. You take all the the all of those those massive uh, music composers. You have this this amazing tension between darkness and light in, mm. in classical music it's so rich and so epic and it goes it, it, it's no compromise you know mm. it's the intensity of an emotion to the core of it and I think metal can do the same mm. if you take those extreme metal uh, bands of course Timo Borghi is not the most extreme black metal band you can find but <laughs> extreme enough that mm. it works with with classical music because it they enhance each other like it it brings it um, the happiness the epicness of classical music it gives an, an entire new dimension to black metal mm -hmm. and it's the same with symphonic metal it's the same with uh, any kind of music the symphony of, and the, the classical music just just opens the uh, the range of emotions that that a music can have and supports the heaviness and the darkness of of, of metal music I think mm -hmm. yeah to me my 
to me, I, I, I totally prefer Metallica with the symphony, yeah. like with the, the orchestra, than Metallica alone. Because when I listen to the, I discovered Metallica honestly with symphony and Metallica, and mm. when I listen to Metallica without the symphony, I, I miss something. I like there is a theme that is beautiful and it's not here anymore, and it, it makes the music the music way more richer. What about you? Do you listen to classic music yourself? Um, yeah, yeah. Um, I love Mozart, Chopin, uh, a lot of things from the more modern such like Camille Saint Saens or or Satie. Um, sometimes it's some some very specific pieces, and I and I miss the names. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, but I do listen to a lot of classic music because. I find, as I said, I find it's a pure, it's pure creation, it's mm. pure creativity, it's pure feelings. There is no maybe back then this. Of course, they still had codes. It's very codified. Uh, you have to have a theme, and then a counter theme, and then you know, all of that. But um, still, I find it very, very powerful emotionally, and I, I, I feel way more things when I listen to this kind of music than than, than to a lot of other things, and. Um, And also because I'm a singer, I like to listen to music that has no voice because because I, then I still I connect to the music again and not to someone singing and I want to sing the same or I want to sing the song because I when I, as soon as I hear someone singing I want to sing too you know and <laughs> yeah so classical music is a, a huge way for me to relax to to process emotions and thoughts. <laughs>